What's up everyone? The bills are getting signed, the market is taking notice and driving US stocks to close at record highs. Investors are taking note and positioning themselves on the stocks bound to boom on the back of this infrastructure bill sailing through. Billionaire investors Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos and their breakthrough energy ventures are no exception to this. So if you stay with me through to the end, I have one stock penny stock bound to benefit from the pending infrastructure spending boom and has recently signed a game-changing joint venture agreement which their CEO describes as transformative. So you don't want to miss that. I also share with you an update on Workhorse Group which we have covered on the channel before. So make sure you like the video as it helps a lot with the YouTube algorithm and turn on the notification bell to get these top stocks instantly. And also if you want two free stocks worth over $1800 from Webull, also where you can buy fractional shares, please hit the link in the top comment or description below. I will really appreciate it, thank you. So let's jump straight into it with our number 2 EV stock here, which is Workhorse Group listed on the Nasdaq exchange with the ticker number WKHS. It has a share price sitting at $9.50 and a market cap of $1.2 billion. This was one of the early EV stocks I invested in based on their outlook and still holding my red position with optimism. It has had a tough time in the markets recently with bad news after bad news. It is down 22% on the month and over the last 6 months it is down 72% which is painful but is there any hope for Walkers Group? Let's find out. Walkers has spent a lot of time recently filing a formal complaint with the United States Federal Court of Claims protesting the award of the US Postal Service's decision to award a $6 billion 10-year truck contract to another competitor, Oshkosh. The company requested, pursuant to the bid process rules, additional information from USPS. There was some hope on the potential reversal of the decision which gave investors optimism but that seems to be very unlikely to be reversed now. In their Q2 results, Workhorse Group reported sales for the second quarter at $1.2 million compared to $92,000 in the second quarter of 2020 and the increase in sales was primarily related to an increase in trucks delivered. There was a total of 14 trucks delivered in the second quarter compared to one in the same period in 2020. The net loss was $43.6 million so the company's reported revenue of $1.2 million compared to a consensus estimate of nearly $6.4 million and a net loss of $0.35 cents per share compared to a consensus estimate net loss of $0.29 cents per share, which were both misses and disappointing which drove the share price down even further. Their shares were also hit significantly following the Wall Street Journal reporting the initiation of a probe on Lordstown Motors by the US Department of Justice. While Lordstown stock tanked on the news, it dragged Walker shares down as well, given the company's 10% stake in Lordstown. So in its first quarter, Walker's booked $136.3 million in non-cash charge against a fall in the market value of its investment in Lordstown, even as it generated sales worth only $521,000. And later in July, Walker's announced the abrupt departure of its CEO, John Hughes, and withdrew its guidance stating that it wanted to give new CEO Richard Douch a sufficient review and diligence period to establish a plan to address the continuing challenges and opportunities. The only guidance workers gave during the first quarter was an estimated production of 1,000 vehicles in 2021 and given they sold only 14 vehicles in Q2, it makes it an even bitter pill to swallow. The new CEO Douch revealed that workers will revise the design of his C1000 vehicles based on customer feedback, which means production will be limited for now if not delayed and that's not something investors want to hear in an upcoming EV boom. So more to come from the new CEO's strategy and outlook. Walkers has 4 analysts covering the stock with 2 buys and 2 hold ratings and the analyst upper price target of $18 per share gives it an upside of over 90% over the next 12 months. So some tiny consolation there if their catalysts play out. Next up to our number one penny stock for today which is Blue Jay Mining, ticker number on the OTC BLLYF. It is sitting at a share price of over 21 cents and a market cap of 201 million dollars. Its share price is down 10.5% on the day giving a decent pullback following their latest momentum run. 
In the last 5 days, it is up 21.7% and over the month, it is also up 38% and trading at all-time highs on the back of latest news. Blue Jay is OTCQB listed with an average of 935,000 shares traded over a 30-day period and over 971.6 million shares outstanding. Blue Jay Mining is a Greenland-centric multi-commodity, multi-project exploration and development resource company. It is focused on advancing its primary Dundas Ilmenite project in Greenland, the world's most significant, highest-grade mineral San Ilmenite deposit into production in the near term and driving value through the development of its other large-scale high-grade projects, providing exposure to commodities including nickel, copper, lead, zinc and platinum. Blue Jay recently got into a joint venture with Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos' back company, Cobalt Metals. Cobalt's purpose is to discover and develop new ethical sources of the critical materials for electric vehicles. Cobalt's objective is to make more discoveries of outstanding ore bodies by drawing on world-class expertise in exploration geoscience and by developing full-stack exploration technology to use machine learning and other scientific computing techniques to enable highly effective exploration decision-making. The principal investors in COBOL include Breakthrough Energy Ventures Fund overseen by Bill Gates and whose other investors include Michael Bloomberg, Jeff Bezos and Ray Dalio. Let's hear from their CEO on why this deal is transformative for them and their outlook. But first of all, can you give us the headlines on the joint venture agreement? This uh, JV is transformative uh, for Blue Jay. Basically, the JV agreement is with a perfect matched strong partner that supplement uh, the Blue Jay expertise and our capacities. Cobalt will earn 51% uh, of the project to a two states earn in commitment, which is centered around uh, advanced evaluation of drill targets and drilling activities. While uh, Blue Jay remains a full partner in the project by re retaining the ability to actually self fund and maintain uh, a 49% ownership through uh, all the way through to, pro to production. And you, you seldom see a similar possibility to really maintain that level of ownership in a JV. Something that we are extremely happy about and it provides external public investors with an opportunity to, to investing alongside a private investment entity of this magnitude. So um, really great. So and the private uh, investment entity we're talking about is, of course, Cobold, uh, backed by people like Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos, Michael Bloomberg, very big names. They've, they've been using big data to scour the world looking for the best possible mining projects for to drive the, the electric vehicle green revolution. They've, they've picked you. Now, what does that say about the potential uh, for Disco in Greenland? And what does Cobalt's involvement and expertise, what does it mean for your development? Yeah, well, as I said, the, the JV agreement really bring in a strong partner to the DISCO project. Um, and as you're saying, not only is sort of world famous names here, but it's really also backed up by, by and this is notable, right? It's climate, energy and technology funds uh, that are created by these um, innovators and investors, uh, the most renowned innovators and investors of our time here. Um, these funds have realized that critical metals are needed to sustain and drive the electrification and the green transition to meet the climate change. Cobalt metals represent a vehicle for that. They see uh, or they are set out to seek and identify some of the most promising targets to meet that demand. And there is a belief here in the, the DISC project. It's ticking all boxes and represents a potential at scales that you seldom see. And but yeah, one thing is sort of the financial strengths here, but the disruptive and innovative technology uh, in the form of machine learning and algorithms that are developed uh, through unmatched Silicon Valley expertise by COBOL is a perfect match for this project. We have a wealth of data, a wealth of work that already has been carried out at Disco, and it's just sort of needing this technology to sort of uh, bring it into the next phase here and bring it into drilling. So 
Cobalt's unmatched capabilities, together with our local uh, geological and technical expertise, our profile, our network into Greenland, and their operational and logistical expertise uh, on the high ESG standards, is a perfect match for, for progress in Disco here. So a very interesting and mind-blowing prospects ahead for these stocks, but only consider getting in if the price is right for you and if you fully understand their risk. This video is not financial advice, a buy or sell recommendation, but it's meant to bring some new and exciting stocks to your attention for you to do your own research. As always, I would love to hear from you, so please let me know your thoughts on these stocks in the comment section below and what other high growth stocks are catching your eyes lately. And if you're new to my channel, please ensure to subscribe and hit the bell so you're notified when I upload new videos. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please check out this video right here or this playlist right here to watch equally insightful content from the channel. Thank you so much for being here and I look forward to having you in my next video. Thank you.